And just like that, it's July. Hey guys, welcome back. It is that time of the month. Finally, the book of the month books for July have dropped. They made us wait until the 1st of July. How dare they? So let's just take a look at what they have for us. Okay, so I'm really, really hoping for some good picks this month because I didn't choose anything last month. So fingers crossed that this is good. Okay, so we have five selections this month. So first one here is House of Glass. Repeat author, early release. We love that. Who killed the nanny? That question lies at the heart of the story of a family coming undone in a creepy DC mansion. Okay, so it's psychological, whodunits, creepy, and marriage issues. On the outside, they were the golden perfect family with the perfect life. Of course they were. On the inside, they built the perfect lie. Of course they did. A young nanny who plunged to her death, or was she pushed? A nine-year-old girl who, <laughs> who collects sharp objects and refuses to speak. I'm, I'm worried about this nine-year-old. Um, a lawyer whose job it is to uncover who in the family is a victim and who is a murderer. But how can you find the truth when everyone here is lying? Typical thriller fashion everyone's lying. Rose is a nine-year-old girl who witnessed the possible murder of her nanny in the midst of her parents' bitter divorce and immediately stopped talking. Stella is a best interest attorney appointed to serve as a counsel for children in custody cases. She never accepts clients under 13 due to her own traumatic childhood, but Stella's mentor, a revered judge, believes Stella is the only one who can help. From the moment Stella passes through the iron security gate, steps into the historic DC home, she realizes the case is even more twisted. The family far more troubled than she feared. There's something eerie about the house itself. It's a... <laughs> it took me a second. It's a plastic house with not a single bit of glass to be found. As Stella comes closer to uncovering the secrets um, they are desperate to hide, danger, un danger wraps around her like a shroud and her past and present are set on a collision course in ways she never expected. Everyone is a suspect in the nanny's murder. The mother, the father, the grandmother, the nanny's boyfriend, even Rose, is the person Stella is supposed to protect the one she may need protection from. Okay, well, probably not, since that's what, like, the synopsis is telling me, that, like, oh, hey, watch out for Rose. It's probably not Rose. Just saying. Ooh, August 6th. Okay, so that's... I love that. I love early releases. Um, so right now we're at 4.12, 1900 ratings, um, 352 pages. Not too shabby. Next is Husbands and Lovers. Historical fiction, three-peat author. From post-war Cairo to modern-day New England, this a bittersweet tale traces intertwined stories of love and sacrifice. Multiple viewpoints, family drama, salacious, we love that. And second chance romance. Okay, I like second chance romances, I really do. Two women separated by decades and continents and united by an exotic family heirloom. Reclaim secrets and lost loves in the sweeping novel from best-selling author in New England 2022. Three years ago, single mother Mallory received a phone call every parent dreads. Her 10-year-old son Sam has been airlifted from camp with acute poisoning from a toxic death cap mushroom. I feel like he definitely got dared to eat that mushroom. Now searching for the donor kidney that will give her son a chance at a normal life, Mallory's forced to confront who two harrowing secrets from her past her mother's adoption from an infamous Irish orphanage in 52, and her own all-consuming summer romance 14 years earlier with her childhood best friend, Monk Adams. Why? <laughs> Why do authors give do these names? Monk Adams? Monk? Okay. One of the world's most beloved singer-songwriters, a fairy, fairy tale cut short by a devastating betrayal. Cairo, 1951. After suffering tragedy beyond comprehension in the war, Hungarian refugee Hannah has forged a respectable new life for herself 
marriage to a wealthy British diplomat with a coveted posting in glamorous Cairo. But the fateful encounter with the manager of the hotel bristling with spies leads to a passionate affair that will reawaken Hannah's longing <laughs> and for everything she once lost. As revolution simmers in the Egyptian streets, pregnant Hannah finds herself snared in a game of intrigue between two men, an art of sacrifice that will echo down the generations. Hmm, who's the baby daddy? That's the question. <laughs> Timeless and bittersweet, Husbands and Lovers takes readers on an unforgettable journey of heartbreak and redemption. It sounds kind of chicklity with like, chicklity with like a side of historical fiction, sort of. 4.29, pretty good. Uh, 1300 ratings, 384 pages. Oh, this came out June 25th. That's not a July book. So if anybody has already read this before Book of the Month released it, how'd you like it? Let us know. The God of the Woods. Ooh, <laughs> I like that. Um, I love this like drop of paint coming down as well. That's pretty cool. Okay, literary fiction. Repeat author Liz Moore. Propelled by a mysterious disappearance, this epic saga explores the cracks and divisions of a summer camp community. 400 plus pages. Multiple viewpoints, nonlinear timeline, rule. When a teenager vanishes from her summer camp, two worlds collide. Early morning, August 1975, a camp counselor discovers an empty bunk. Its occupant, Barbara, has gone missing. Barbara isn't any 13-year-old. She's the daughter of the family that owns a summer camp and employs most of the region's residents. And this isn't the first time a Van Lahr child has disappeared. Barbara's older brother similarly vanished 14 years ago, never to be found. As a panicked search begins, a thrilling drama unfolds, chasing down the layered secrets of the Van Lahr family and the blue collar community working in its shadow. Moore's multi-threaded story invites readers into a rich and gripping dynasty of secrets and secret chances. Contains mentions of domestic abuse, and Long Bright River is the other book by Liz Moore. I've not read that. That sounds pretty good. It sounds a little paranormally, which I like, like the God of the Woods. Like, is there something out there stealing these children? 4.41, that's good. Over 600 ratings. Um, okay, 490 pages, that's not bad. Okay, so this says it's a thriller slash a mystery. The other said it's literary fiction. I definitely feel like it feels like more of a thriller. The Lost Story. Repeat author, yes. The author of The Wishing Game, the book that you either hate or you love. I was in the did not enjoy category. <laughs> um, so this is a fantasy. So I actually have an ARC of this that I need to read that I have not read yet. Let this fairy tale for adults filled with unicorns and hidden kingdoms enchant you with a fable about second chances. Romance, multiple viewpoints, LGBTQ themes and non-linear timeline. Okay. As boys, best friends Jeremy Cox and Rafe Howell went missing in a vast West Virginia state forest, only to mysteriously reappear six months later with no explanation for where they gone or how they survived. 15 years after their miraculous homecoming, Rafe is a reclusive artist who still bears scars inside and out, but has no memory of what happened during those months. Oof. Meanwhile, Jeremy has become a famed missing persons investigator. With his uncanny abilities, he is the one person who can help vet tech Emile find her sister who vanished in the very same forest as Rafe and Jeremy. I know that this is a like Chronicles of Narnia retelling, which I'm into, <laughs> which I, that's why I requested the ARC because I was like, ah, that sounds good. Um, so I'm actually pretty excited for this one. I did not love her other one, but I'm into this. Jeremy alone knows the fantastical truth about the disappearances, for while the rest of the world was searching for them, the two missing boys were in a magical realm filled with impossible beauty and terrible danger. He believes it is there that they will find Emile's sister. However, Jeremy has kept Raph in the dark since their return for reasons, <laughs> but the time for burying secrets comes to an end as the quest for Emile's sister begins. 
the former Lost Boys must confront their shared past, no matter how traumatic the memories. Alongside the headstrong Emil, Raph, and Jeremy West's journey to the Enchanted World, they called home for six months. Only then can they get back everything and everyone they've lost. Honestly, I think it sounds good. I, I want to read it. So this one's on my list to read. I will, will, will read the ARC. I promise. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. Okay, last one here is A Thousand Times Before Historical Fiction. This is a debut, okay. Three generations of women are woven together by a magical tapestry depicting their past, present, and future. LGBTQ plus themes, female friendships, non-linear timeline, and magical. A heart-rending family saga following three generations of women connected by a tapestry through which they inherit the experiences of those that live, oh, that lived before them. Oh, that's interesting. Sweeping readers from India to modern day Brooklyn. Ayukta is finally sitting down with her wife, Nadia, to respond to a question she's long avoided. Should they have a child? The decision is complicated by a secret her family has kept for centuries. One that she will be the first to share with someone outside their bloodline. The women in her family inherit a mysterious tapestry through which each generation can experience the memories of those who came before her. That's wild. That's a wild premise. I don't think I would like that. <laughs> I don't think that I would want to inherit my mother's, my grandmother's, etc. memories. I don't think I would want to. So she invites Nadia into this lineage, carrying it her through its past. She release, relives her grandmother's um, life once a happy child. Um, she migrates um, to Gujarat during partition, witnessing violence and loss that forever shape her approach to marriage and motherhood. Her daughter bears this weight in her own blood in 1974, when gender equality and urban class distinctions define the community as a bold student movement takes hold. As she unspools these generations of women, whole decades of love, loss, heartbreak, and revival, she reveals the tapestry's second gift, the ability for each of these women to drastically reshape their own worlds. Like all power, both fantastical and societal, this inheritance is more treacherous than it seems. What would it mean to impart an impossible burden to withhold these incredible gifts? That sounds heavy. Um, curious to see how long this is. Okay, so 4.23 stars. Oh, it only has 26 ratings. How is that possible? Um, 368 pages. I'm kind of surprised. I feel like if you're gonna span so many generations of people's lives, it needs to be a little bit thicker. So I'm kind of surprised it's only 368 pages. Okay, so I course want to see what the add-ons are for this month all the colors of the dark uh the field guide to love incident <laughs> incidents around the house looks wild of course it's a horror this haunted how this haunted house horror show about a family stalked by an benevolent entity have you leave <laughs> the lights on yeah that looks creepy as fuck that looks good though um oh this one the love after the Love of My Afterlife. I actually, th I think this one looks good, actually. It's a romance. Um, this lady, like, meets her, like, soulmate, like, when she's about to go to the afterlife, and then he gets sent back to Earth, and she, like, has to, like, chase him or something. It sounds good. All right, well, I think that there are some interesting-sounding picks. The one that I'm actually the most interested in is The Lost Story, but I have that as an ARC, so I'm not gonna get it through Book of the Month. I am super, super curious. What do you think of this month's picks? Are you happy? Are you not so happy? Let me know if you're picking any, what you're choosing in the comments down below. Just so you know, <laughs> Aardvark also dropped their picks today on July 1. So I'm actually going to be posting this Book of the Month video today on July 1, and then tomorrow on July 2nd, that's when Aardvark selections will be going up. So they will be a day apart, but I am looking at both of them. And that's it for today. So we'll see you next time. Bye.